Hello and welcome back to Synapse. This is Ritika and in this video we will learn about the perineal spaces. The three spaces that we will be talking about are the ischiorectal or the ischioanal space, the superficial perineal space or pouch and the deep perineal space or pouch. We will learn about the boundaries, the contents and the clinical importance of each of these spaces. First let us look at the perineum and its boundaries. Perineum is a lower part of pelvis that is below the pelvic diaphragm. Pelvic diaphragm is made of the levator ani muscle and the ischiococcygeus muscle. Boundaries of the perineum. Anteriorly, we have the pubic symphysis. Posteriorly, the tip of coccyx. Laterally, the ischial tuberosity. Anterolaterally is the ischiopubic rami. Posterolaterally, we have the sacrotuberous ligament. With an imaginary line drawn in the middle, joining the two ischial tuberosities, we get two triangles. The anterior triangle is called as the urogenital triangle, the posterior triangle known as the rectal or the anal triangle. Let's look at the ischiorectal fossa in the anal triangle. The boundaries of this is, laterally we have the obturator internus muscle, medially levator ani muscle. We also have the pudendal canal in the lateral wall and also the pudendal canal and its contents. Contents of the ischio anal space are first of all the contents of the pudendal canal itself which is internal pudendal vessels and the pudendal nerve. Apart from that we have the inferior rectal vessels and nerves and abundant amount of fat. This ischio anal space on both the sides are connected to each other posteriorly that is behind the anal canal making it a horseshoe shaped space and thus infection on one side can spread to the other side by this communication. Now let us look at the urogenital triangle which is the anterior part of the perineum. Here we have the superficial perineal space and the deep perineal space. We have skin, superficial fascia, deep fascia and the perineal membrane. Between the deep fascia and the perineal membrane, you see the superficial perineal space. Between the perineal membrane and the urogenital diaphragm, we have the deep perineal space. So now we know that deep perineal space or pouch is between the urogenital diaphragm above and the perineal membrane below. Here we have the membranous urethra, which is surrounded by sphincter urethra muscle. Now let's look at the, all the contents, okay? So one that we've already enumerated is the membranous urethra, the sphincter urethra muscle. Another muscle that we see here is the deep transverse perineal muscle. We have the terminal branches of the internal pudendal artery, which include the deep artery of the penis or clitoris, so penis and males, clitoris and females, dorsal artery of penis or clitoris, and the artery to the bulb of penis or clitoris. The dorsal nerve, to penis or clitoris and we also have the cowpers of the bulba urethral gland in males, the vagina and the urethra in case of females. So here we have discussed about the urethra, the two muscles, the arteries, the nerve and the gland contents of the deep space. Let's look at a scenario of damage to the membranous urethra as seen in straddle injury. In such a case, the ure urine is going to dissipate into the deep perineal space and the space surrounding the prostate and the urinary bladder and this space is called as a space of retzius. Superficial perineal pouch. We know that this is situated between the deep fascia and the perineal membrane. Now let us look at a diagram drawn um, of the superficial perineal pouch in males first. We are drawing the ischial tuberosity, the pubis. Connecting the two we have the ischial pubic rami which forms the boundary of the superficial perineal uh, or the perineum itself. Laterally we have the ischial cavernosus muscle which is the only muscle that does not insert, perineal muscle which does not insert into the perineal body. In the center we have the bulbous spongiosus muscle which is inserting into our perineal body which is a fibromuscular band which receives the insertion of all the perineal muscles except ischiocabernosis as already mentioned. And here we have the superficial transverse perineal muscle. Let us look at a similar diagram in females. Okay, We have the ischiocabernosis muscle, bulbous spongiosus muscle, the perineal body and the superficial transverse perineal muscle with the vaginal and the urethral openings. 
Contents of the superficial perineal pouch include the three muscles that have already been enumerated, the terminal branches of internal pudendal artery which is already elaborated in the previous topic, dorsal scrotal or the labial artery uh, that is vessels and nerves. We have the penile urethra and root of penis in males and in females we have the vaginal and the urethral openings. In females we also have the Bartholin's gland present in this space. Lastly, let us look at the consequence of penile urethral injury as seen in usually the pelvic fracture cases. We know that penile urethra is a content of the superficial perineal pouch and this superficial perineal pouch communicates with the anterior abdominal wall. So in case of penile urethral injury, the urine is going to spread to the scrotum around the urethra in the penis and to the anterior abdominal wall. But remember, it, the urine never enters the peritoneal cavity. That's all for this video. I hope you liked it. Do share this with your colleagues and your friends. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And thank you. See you again.